What's going on, my good old friends of YouTube? It's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So we all know the markets were closed today. It was Martin Luther King Day, at least here in the U.S., but abroad, they weren't closed. So we're going to talk about the foreign markets very briefly in this video, and we're also going to talk about five additional stocks to the ones we talked about yesterday, which yesterday I made a video on 10 stocks. So 15 stocks over the past two days, guys. And by the way, go check out yesterday video after this one it has a lot of value in it so if you all find value hit the like button subscribe join my patreon down below get your two stocks from weeble down below and get your 50 bucks free from m1 finance all of that is linked down below if you didn't get the memo yet and with that being said let's get right into the video so we're not going to break down what spy did because it didn't do anything we, <laughs> we haven't seen any action since friday and i pretty much did cover this in yesterday's video which again is why you got to go watch yesterday's video so take a look at spy again we'll, we'll talk more about it when there's more action but overall just watch 460 460 is a big level and for triple q which tracks the nasdaq 100 380 is a big level so again we're not going to break it down in this video go check out the previous video if you guys are interested but we are going to talk about the foreign markets today which were open because again u.s markets were closed martin luther king day but in the foreign countries here that we're going to talk about there was no Martin Luther King Day. So global stocks moved higher Monday, which is today, and what was a quiet trading session because, again, U.S. markets were closed. Martin Luther King Day, we, we said that 100 times already. And indexes in Europe and Asia were broadly in the green, which is good. The pan-European stock 600 rose 0.8%, which is pretty good, almost 1% there, while the Tokyo's Nikkei 225 ended up the day or ended the day up 0.7 percent so it's that's a good sign you know it's not like these global markets are getting destroyed today uh and granted there isn't much volume but still pretty good day overall it's a good sign that at least across the seas there you know even if you're watching it or this video over there um, in Europe, maybe Asia, who knows. Uh, it's good to see that you guys over there are doing well. The markets are doing well today because that could signal, hey, maybe tomorrow the markets do well um, in the U.S. and overall in the globe or all across the globe as well again. So what do you guys think about that? Drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Make sure to subscribe. Hit the like button. Do all that good stuff. It really helps me out in the YouTube algorithm. And I do appreciate all you guys out there watching as always. So let's talk about now that we got, you know, a little bit about the foreign markets, how they did today, let's talk about five stocks in addition to the 10 from yesterday that I'm looking at right now. Number one is uh, GM, General Motors. You guys can see if I zoom in a bit here, a clear cut inverse head and shoulders. We have the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder. And on Friday, we went down about 1% and we're clearly fighting as of now to hold above the 180 moving average on this four hour chart, which also happens to be roughly the neckline of this inverse head and shoulder. So if we hold above, let's say 60 bucks, which we are as of now, and we start to get a rip or a breakout, shall I say, towards 63, that's going to be a very good sign that GM the inverse head and shoulders is playing out, and there could be, uh, you know, room towards 65, 67, heck, maybe even 70 bucks a share again for the stock, which I believe it was. Let's see here the price of the stock. When's the last time it was up a ton like that? Uh, yeah, that was back in 2000. So it's been 20 years, uh, more than 20 years. Um, and who knows if we break 65, 67, which is the high point, multi multi year high. We could be going 70 plus. So keep your eyes on GM General Motors. HLT is another one that I'm looking at now. Hilton Worldwide Holdings. You guys can see this one's clearly been up trending for weeks, months actually. It's been months. And you can see that on the four hour chart here. And just recently we've pulled back a bit. Rightfully so. It got overbought. Very hot. It hit a new high. It pulled back. It makes sense, right? It went down from 159. Now it's trading at about 148. It's down about 8%, which is not much at all, guys. Let me tell you, that's not much at all. And we are holding the bottom of the wedge right now and the key 180 moving average on this four-hour chart. So I think 
if Hilton bounces off this, we get a confirmation of a break, let's say above 150 again. This could be a nice play, a uh, breakout play. So I'm going to just set my alert right now. Mark is at or above $150 per share. We'll put it right there. And the third stock, which has been just freaking utterly obliterated, guys, recently, is Lululemon, ticker symbol LULU. And let me say this right off the bat. Lululemon has not confirmed a reversal yet. It's in free fall mode. It's, it's clearly in free fall mode, falling knife mode, or uh, whatever you want to call it. The stock is down from 485 just in the middle of November. Now it's sitting at 328. That means it is down 32%, down about 150 bucks per share. And like I said, it's in free fall mode. It's under the moving averages. We're seeing a death cross, no reversal in sight. And if you pull up the three-year chart, the three-year chart looks great. I mean, look at that. Clear up trend. This is simply a pullback. I think anywhere from, I'll put a broad range on it, let's say 270 bucks on the low end to 300 on the higher end, meaning there could be more downside considering it's at 328 right now. I think uh, between 270 300 that's where buyers will start stepping in. Um, and honestly, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before, but I don't see it going much lower than 250 um, 260 Maybe it does, but based on this trend as of now, now, maybe buyers step in around uh, 270, 300, and we have to wait and see if that even happens. Because again, it's uh, it's in free fall mode. It's in free fall mode. No buyers in sight on this one. So let's talk a little bit about Boeing, which on the flip side has been seeing some buyers. This thing has been rallying recently, the past couple of weeks, about a month since um, roughly the 20th of December when it was at 185. Now it's sitting almost the 20th of January. It's sitting at 227. So the stock's up over 20% recently, which is nuts. And it's approaching a sell zone. And I want to see if Boeing is able to break out of the sell zone and turn it into a, maybe a momentum play, maybe a breakout play. And the sell zone's around 230. You guys can see clearly ever since September, October, you know, 230, we sold off to about 207 since getting rejected by that point. Also, in November, we sold off from 230 all the way to 185. Now, again, if we end up selling off at 230, we could easily go back to 200, under 200. But if we see buyers break us out of that sell zone above 235, 240, let's say we cracked the 250s, that's where Boeing will start gaining momentum. And they actually report earnings very soon here. So we'll see. Maybe that earnings report on the 26th of this month, maybe that's the catalyst that Boeing needs to push it higher. So we're watching it. I'm watching it. BA is the ticker on Boeing. And the last one is MNST, which admittedly, um, I had a serious monster problem. I'm not going to lie. No pun intended. Monster problem with monsters because I was drinking those things Every day for a good couple of years, guys. I, I couldn't tell you exactly how many years I was drinking them for. But, you know, maybe I'd miss a day or two here and there. But I was really loving the monsters back in the day. And uh, <laughs> needless to say, now I just have them as a treat. Maybe once, one, one or two a month, something like that. It, it can't hurt. Maybe just a little bit. doesn't hurt, right? Uh, but overall, monsters, it's, it's a great product. And the stock is looking pretty interesting here. You know, it went from 80 bucks. This is another one that's rallied a lot recently from 80 bucks back in the beginning of December. So about a month and a half ago, went all the way from 80 to about a hundred, which is a move of 20 bucks or about 21% roughly. And now it's pulled back from 98, hundred bucks. Now it's sitting at about 89, 90 bucks. It's holding as of now, this trend line that I do have set out here on the four hour chart. And we're fighting buyers are fighting to step in um, around the 180 moving average. I'm not too convinced we're going to see a big breakout quite yet because of, of the nature of the sell off we saw on Friday. It was a big drop. I mean, this thing collapsed 5% like it's nobody's business. So maybe the selling's not done yet. We have to watch out for it. But let's say we start breaking back over 91. 
92. Maybe we do get a little relief rally to 95 before we maybe start selling off again uh, from there. So overall, guys, that's it. I don't want to keep you too long today. We're about 10 minutes in. We're about 10 minutes in. So the moral of the story is foreign markets did well. The U.S. markets were closed. Does foreign markets, the fact that they did well, does that mean we're going to rip tomorrow to the upside? No, but it's it's a good sign. It's a good sign. It's not like they collapsed, right, which would have been a terrible sign. So foreign markets did well. Those are five stocks I'm looking at. Again, go check out that video from yesterday for 10 more stocks and a deeper breakdown on the S&P and Triple Q. Go watch that. I'll see you guys there. Hit the like button on this video. Make sure to subscribe. Drop me a comment. Join my Patreon. Get your 50 bucks free from M1 Finance and your two stocks from Webull. All of that's linked down below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. As always, peace out.